Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. There is a secret that is not widely known by Muslims, which is, that there are actually two Kaabas. But the question is, where is the other Kaaba? For your information, Kaaba is a sacred place where Muslims gather to perform Hajj and Umrah, located in the city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Before continuing the discussion, I want to give a disclaimer that I am not an expert in this field, but I want to convey what I recently read. I hope my Muslim viewers can provide further explanation about this in the comment section. So, there is a statement in the Quran from Surah at tur from verse 1 to 10, and what I want to highlight is, the statement in verse 4, which states, And by the sacred house frequently visited. According to the interpretation expert, Tafsir Jal Alain, the sacred house frequently visited, or Bayt al Makmur, is located in the third heaven, or sixth heaven, or the seventh heaven, which is located directly above the Kaaba, which is visited every day by 70,000 angels who perform thawaf and prayers there, and they do not return to it forever. In short, there are two interpretations of Bayt al Makmur, according to modern interpretation experts. The first interpretation is, that it refers to the Kaaba on earth itself, that is frequently visited by Muslims for Hajj and Umrah. The second interpretation is, that Bayt al Makmur refers to the Kaaba of the angels, that is located in the seventh heaven, adjacent to the Arsh, or the place where Allah is, which is positioned parallel to the Kaaba on earth. And did you know, what I find mind-blowing is that, according to some Islamic scholars that I know, they say that the Kaaba on earth is parallel or perpendicular to the Kaaba that is on the Arsh, which means, that the earth never rotates, or, it can be said, that the earth, is the center of the universe. So, if indeed the Kaaba on earth is always perpendicular to the Kaaba on the Arsh, is it true that the earth is the center of the universe? What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. In 1904, J.C. Brown was a seasoned prospector, having spent most of his life searching for gold and other precious metals. He had heard rumors of a lost city in Mount Shasta, but had never given them much thought, until one day, when he stumbled upon a mysterious tunnel. As he walked through the dark and twisting passages of the tunnel, J.C. Brown felt a sense of excitement and unease. He knew that he was entering unknown territory, but his curiosity got the better of him. He pressed on, following the tunnel for hours, until he finally emerged into a vast underground cavern. The cavern was unlike anything Brown had ever seen before. The walls were covered in strange symbols and hieroglyphics, and there were signs of ancient civilization everywhere. As he explored the cavern, J.C. Brown felt a sense of awe and wonder, but also a growing sense of fear. He knew that he was treading on ground that had been untouched for centuries, and he didn't know what secrets lay hidden within. Despite his fear, J.C. Brown pressed on, determined to explore every inch of the cavern. He wandered through dark passageways and climbed up steep, winding staircases, always following the symbols and signs that he found on the walls. And then, after hours of wandering, he came upon a room that took his breath away. The room was filled with tombs, each one containing the bones of a human being that was over 10 feet tall. J.C. Brown had never seen anything like it before. He felt a sense of awe and fear wash over him as he stared at the giant skeletons. He knew that he had stumbled upon something truly remarkable, but he also knew that he had to keep it a secret. 
For years, J.C. Brown kept his discovery hidden, fearing that if he spoke about it, he would be ridiculed, or worse, that someone would try to take it away from him. But his obsession with a lost city never waned, and after 30 years, he finally decided to share his discovery with the world. He gathered a team of 80 people and set out to explore the lost city once again. But on the day of the expedition, J.C. Brown disappeared without a trace. Some members of the team claimed to have seen him enter a dark passageway, but no one ever saw him emerge. Could J.C. Brown have accidentally discovered a secret city that was being hidden by a group of organizations, or could there be another life or civilization behind the tunnel? What do you think? Imagine if there was a place that held the secrets to unlimited power and knowledge that could propel human civilization to unimaginable heights. Unfortunately, this place, known as the Alexandria Library, was destroyed by a small group of organizations who feared the advancement of human intelligence. In its heyday, the library housed 70,000 manuscripts and blueprints, including the magical theories that were based on scientific logic, which could transform our understanding of magic forever. Rumor has it that the blueprint for unlimited electrical technology was hidden within the library's walls. If we were able to harness such energy, we could unveil the possibility of creating magic with electricity. It's a fascinating concept that makes you wonder what other hidden knowledge could be waiting to be discovered. However, this power has the potential to change the course of history forever, and some organizations may not want that to happen. If every individual had the power of perpetual energy in their hands, the world as we know it would never be the same again. The question remains, should we have the power to control perpetual energy? What are your thoughts? And could it be possible that some of the most brilliant minds today have copies of those past technological blueprints? The possibilities are endless. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.